Welcome to Podcast 88. It's an accumulation of my early morning mind wanderings, and you are there. Hi, this is Lana D. Welcome to the Dear Lana D Podcast. I hope our time together will put a smile on your face and hope in your heart. Do you have a problem or a situation that you'd like to talk about? Then this is the podcast for you. Good morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. It's fall-like summer weather, my kind of weather, 70s, lower 80s. It is just absolutely beautiful. A perfect day? Well, forget that. I have learned to settle for that perfect moment. It was so beautiful this morning watching the birds outside my window. Two woodpeckers, a Baltimore oriole, several hummingbirds, a few nuthatches, four very loud blue jays, and a whole lot of the garden variety sparrows eating harmoniously outside my window on the bird feeder. That lasted all of about 15 seconds. Then they, like children, began to fight for a turn on the choice purchase to eat. One blue jay flew into my window pane, and before the morning was over, four birds hit that window. Yes, I did wash them recently, but I also put stickers up. It became a free-for-all. With the end result, a car drove by and scattered the lot. At least this does beat the other day, when Michael and I saw a rather large hawk swoop down and quite possibly take off with one of my pets, a chipmunk. I may not actually have a pet, but I have enjoyed watching the little guys create a home under my porch and yell to their friends, Come and get it. They just filled the bird feeder. I can't wait for heaven when the lion will lie down with the lamb and the hawk will make friends with the chipmunks, not dinner. I woke up early today and often last night, thinking and praying for two of my grandchildren who are basically trapped in Italy. The kids have missed their first week of school. I have been thinking about and praying for my grandson, Logan, who was ill and ended up at the doctor's office this week. I can still hear his little voice saying, Grandma. His two-year-old vocabulary makes it difficult for him to tell me exactly what's wrong, but his request to come to my house broke my heart. I wanted to help my son make him feel better, but could do nothing from this distance but pray. I am praying now for my cousin Sherry, who's battling cancer again for the third time. She's having a biopsy this morning. I received a phone call from my sister-in-law, whose father is in the hospital with kidney failure. We cried, we prayed, and reminisced for about half an hour this morning. So, like everyone else who hasn't passed on to eternity, I long for that perfect day, the day when everything is as it should be. Everyone is well, happy, and all people, along with everything in nature, lives in harmony, sharing, loving one another. I am so glad that Scripture promises us just that. What a day that will be. There is coming a day When no heartache shall come No more clouds in the sky No more tears to dim the eye All is peace forevermore On that happy golden shore what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see. 
And I look upon his face The one who saves me by his grace When he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be There'll be no sorrows there No more burdens to bear No more sickness, no pain No more parting there And forever I will be With the one who died for me what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be What a day, glorious day that will be Once again, I have taken forever to podcast. Honestly, I have wanted to, but I've been so busy with all those things that keep us all busy. One good thing, I was able to ride along and welcome back the grandkids from their summer vacation with their dad and grandparents in Missouri. That coupled with the fact that my daughter and son-in-law moved to a home just down the street, and yes, they brought the grandkids with them. I now have a fuller life than I ever thought was possible. Now, instead of seeing the grandkids a couple of times a week, I see them daily. Oh, happy day. I am experiencing more happiness than I ever thought possible. But this and other daily activities have squeezed out my list. I was walking through the kitchen the other day, lamenting to the Lord about my list. And I heard him speak to my heart, You will always choose people's needs to the needs on your list. I stopped. He was absolutely right. I just knew in my heart that it was the right thing to do as well. So I have decided to stress less about that list and enjoy being with and helping people more. I have a friend that lives a couple of miles from me. While we would like to spend more time with each other, we settle for speaking occasionally and seeing each other when we can squeeze in time. Cheryl is also a grandmother. Enough said. The last time we got together, we went to Cracker Barrel. I love that place. We had a wonderful time catching up with stories and pictures of our grandchildren. What did I eat? That's not as important as what I didn't eat. For the last few years, as you know, I've been monitoring carbs. Obviously not as well as I should, or I wouldn't have gained this weight. But nevertheless, I could write a book on what not to eat. On this particular morning, I was good. I ate my eggs and bacon and passed on the biscuits, despite the fact that Cracker Barrel is known for its country biscuits. As I nibbled on my bacon, my eyes rested on this small sliver of orange that garnished my plate. No, that is not on my low-carb diet. I watched that orange. I love oranges, but I dutifully let that orange slice sit there on that plate and did not touch it. 
that single selfless act haunted me for days. Here I am, still fat, counting carbs, and not enjoying it one bit. So I have rebelled. I have decided to eat in moderation instead of starvation. I'm done dieting. You heard me. I am just going to eat healthy. What a novel idea. No more just low carb for me. I refuse to hate myself any more. I have fruit back into my diet. In moderation, of course, everything in moderation. I have enjoyed bread again. And shocker, my energy level has grown. I just can't believe it. At first, yes, I ate just a tad bit more that was helpful to losing weight. Okay, a lot more. But much to my surprise, I didn't gain a bunch back. I have discovered I still have to watch my sugar and my carbs to some extent. They still make me hungrier after eating than before. I also have to continue to record my food intake. Because I'm a mindless snacker. And if I don't write it down, I will and do overeat. And I am not letting Michael upset me. Just because Michael finally, after years of my coaxing, nagging, reasoning, and finagling, oh, that and the fact that that doctor told him he should diet, well, to my horror, Michael has been good. He has more self-control in his little pinky than I do in my whole body. He has lost over twenty pounds, she said through gritted teeth. Life is not fair. But I am not going to be mad at him for being able to lose weight so easily. No, not me. I am not that petty, nor have I slipped him food laden with hidden carbs and fats or extra calories. Not that he would notice. He still asks me if his peanuts are fattening or if that box of good and plenty he just polished off is bad or good for him. Really? I will just be happy for him that he can eat two meals a day, any teeny tiny snack before he goes to bed. Men, it is so not fair. I fished twice, and once you get me to leave this house, though be it kicking and screaming, I do manage to enjoy myself. I bought a couple of greenhouses, the kind you can buy at Big Lots, and have been playing around with one of them. We went away one weekend, came back, and had flown across the yard, so we realized it needed to be tied down well. It's a sauna in there if you leave the door zipped. I know it's too late to plant, but I've put a few seeds in a couple of pots anyway, and I dutifully water them, thus the reason for the sauna effect. Next year I hope to build up some boxes, put in topsoil, and have a garden for real. Let's face it, even though my father has a beautiful, bountiful garden each year, I am not destined to have a yard that will sustain life, at least not a garden. I haven't in the 41 years we've been married, so I look forward to next year. I'll start my seeds early in my new greenhouses. Have you noticed fewer sweat bees and hornets this year? I have. Last year was really bad. Did I ever tell you about my encounter with a bald-faced hornet's nest? Didn't even know there was such a thing. Until one night I opened my back door. I wanted to find Michael, who was working in the shed late one night. As I did, my face was inches away from my light, and what I thought was a large, fancy ornament Michael must have hung over that light. I looked at it several times. It was beautiful. The next day when I asked Michael what he had hung over the light, he looked at me quizzically and had no idea what I was talking about. We later learned it was one huge bald-faced hornet's nest. These are not nice hornets, and I was lucky I wasn't stung. After posting a picture on Facebook and letting everyone know I had planned to spray it the next evening, 
There was a huge outcry from my friends who said, Are you crazy? We had to call an exterminator, who literally ran so fast past that hornet's nest. Yes, he ran past it while spraying it. Apparently, he did not want to get stung either. As I continue my transformation into the new and improved Lana D, I cannot help everyone do everything, especially when they don't want my help. Michael and I split the work around the home. Michael has claimed getting the mail. It's his job. Even though I see the mailman long before Michael wakes up, I only occasionally remove the most important mail, leaving the rest for him to bring in. It is his job, after all. I also found this quote and took it to heart. You can never win an argument with a negative person. They only hear what suits them and listen to you only to respond. There is so much truth to this. No matter how hard we try, we can't always make people listen to reason or understand where we are coming from. So we have to jump into self-preservation mode and move on. Healing. Recently, I have been reading several books on my Kindle from that list of over 600 now. One is written by a woman named Wendy Alec. She is one of the founders of God TV. Are you familiar with that station? If you are, you'll know that her husband left her due to an affair he was having. She wrote a book entitled Visions from Heaven. Wendy talked about a serious illness she'd had. It lasted for a very long time. While she was sick, she prayed and prayed, but felt God didn't either hear her or listen. And this affected her faith. In one encounter with God, after she was once again whole, Wendy asked him about it. Basically, God showed Wendy that even though he has allowed her to go through this physical trial, he never, ever left her. This experience left Wendy feeling uncertain about a lot of things she had learned as a Christian. Her faith and strength was renewed as she spent time with God. I think many people wonder whether they admit it to themselves or not. They have felt this way. They feel that if God really loved them, they or those they love would never ever go through the hard place, never suffer physical problems or financial setbacks. They wouldn't have broken hearts. But that is not what God has promised us. As Christians, we need to look at the Word of God to see, first of all, why God brought us into this world, what He expects from us, why were we created. An article in Christianity Today made some really great points about this issue. Did you know King David also wondered why God even bothered with mankind? Psalm 8, 3 and 4 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, what is man that you're mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? Why did God make us? To answer that, we need to look at a couple of things. First, it wasn't because he needed us. Many times you'll hear preachers say that God needed us. The God who made the world and everything in it. And he didn't make us because he was lonely, even though some people want you to think that. Lonely before we were here? Why, God had company. The Bible tells us he had his Son and the Holy Spirit. And you can find that in Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in our own image. And he didn't make us because he needed his ego fed. It's not like God made us to satisfy some craving to be worshipped. We worship God because he deserves it. God is totally secure in who he is. God chose to create us out of his great love. 
and it's impossible to get our heads around that idea, but it's true. Also, God is love, 1 John 4, 8. And because of that, he made us so he could enjoy all that he is and all that he's done. Also, God has infinite wisdom. He chose to make us as part of his eternal plan. So what part do we play in that plan? Well, the Bible is full of instructions for how we should live our lives. Here's a few of his verses to remember. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 39. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's Ephesians 2 and 10. We also are part of the war between God and Satan and God's ultimate plan to defeat Satan. By putting our faith in God, we can defeat Satan and his lies. See Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, perhaps the most important part we play in God's eternal plan is to point people to eternal life with God. How do we do that? Through His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible calls this our ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. That's why we're here. But it's also important to note that we have a choice in all of this. When God created us, he didn't make us pawns or robots. He gave us a choice. So the bottom line, God may not need us, but we certainly need him. And God wants us. And he hopes that we'll take that choice and choose him. So can we expect trouble problems? A life of testing? An article written by Dr. Dobson addresses this. One of the most difficult questions the Christian has is the fact that becoming a, a Christian does not make us immune to life's trials and tribulations. Why would a good and loving God allow us to go through such things, such as the death of a child, disease, injury to ourselves and our loved ones, financial hardships, worry and fear? Surely if he loved us, he would take all these things away. After all, doesn't loving us mean he wants us to live and have an easy and comfortable life? Well, according to Dr. Dobson, it does not. The Bible clearly teaches that God loves those who are his children, and he works all things together for good. Romans 8.28 So that must mean his trials and tribulations are allowed in our lives part of the working together of all things for good. Therefore, for the believer, all trials and tribulations must have a divine purpose. Trials develop godly character, and that enables us to rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, character. Character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he's given us, Romans 5, 3 and 5. Jesus Christ set the perfect example, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. These verses reveal God's divine purpose for both Jesus' trials and tribulations, and ours. But don't think every problem that comes your way is a trial that God sets up. We have to suffer natural consequences in this life for our sins and bad choices. But God uses even those sufferings to mold and shape us for his perfect and ultimate good. Trials and tribulations come with both a purpose and a reward. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That's found in James 1, 2 through 4 and 12. Throughout all of our life, trials and tribulations come with victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Although we are in a spiritual battle, Satan has no authority over the believer in Christ. God has given us his word to guide us, his Holy Spirit to enable us, and the privilege of coming to him anywhere at any time to pray. He's also assured us that no trial will test us beyond our ability to bear it, and he will always provide a way so that we can stand up under it. That's in Corinthians 10 and 13. It's Tuesday morning. Seeing as I started this podcast last Friday, I must admit my thoughts are a bit disjointed. So, I apologize in advance. I originally was talking about healing, hopes and dreams, and the healing that must come at times before we can reach our goals. Much of our life is filled with hopes and dreams. We hope one thing but do another, but we must always strive towards our goals. This is what life is all about. I want to share one little story from the weekend before I finish up with a dream that I had. My grandson Wesley, he's an energizer bunny. Since he came back, his energy hasn't changed, but I've seen a directional shift in his thinking. You see, he thinks he's a big boy now. He stands taller, talks more clearly, and believes he has rights, the rights of his older siblings. All these changes in just a three-month period. One thing, however, hasn't changed. His priority list. Wesley has always felt that making it to the bathroom on time, every time, wasn't that important. I read an article recently about the importance of goals even in a child's life. So I found Wesley's weakness his longing and desire, the one thing I thought might make him take every bathroom situation seriously. Super suction ears. Have you ever heard about Veggie Tales? There is a character there who is a large pickle, who thinks he's a superhero. He uses two bathroom plungers on the side of his head in his costume. Well, Wesley has wanted super suction ears for months. I showed Wesley a picture of a headband with those ears attached, and I hooked his heart. He is so intent on winning those ears, he had his mother stop the car on the way to school. He has no intention of having an accident. He sees the prize, super suction ears, and is headed for it. I just so happen to have a pair in my closet. Well, I do. I bought them last summer after he left on vacation and have been waiting for just the right time to give them to him. I just know it will be soon. One of my desires, even though I didn't realize it at the time, was to have a real closure when it came to the pain of my childhood. I loved my mom, but never felt I could get her to understand how her lifestyle, her choices, her unwillingness or inability to change had wounded me. I was still dealing with pain. So I had a dream. But before I tell you about it, I think it is important to understand that God can and does speak in dreams. Some religious leaders have said, God does not speak to us today this way. But God has used dreams as a mode of communication more than once in the scripture. What does the scripture say about dreaming? Does God really speak to us that way? Job 33.14 For God speaketh once, yes twice, yet man perceiveth not. 
in a dream, in a vision of the night, when dream sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. Then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. God sees our pain, he heals our hearts, if we continue to seek and serve him. Now the dream. As I was waking up, I had a dream. I dreamt that I was standing in a group of people who were talking about a wonderful hairstylist who could make your hair feel soft and look healthy and shiny. I believe I dreamt this because the night before I had been at my daughter's house, Michael and I had been helping her and Vince to lay tile on a bedroom floor. The dust from the tiles and mortar must have been in the air, because when I pushed my hair back into a hair tie, it felt coarse and dry. As I was walking towards the hairstylist in my dream, my eyes fell upon this woman whose hair was an example of his work. Her hair was long and dark brown, and it fell across her shoulders in gentle curls. I touched her hair. It was just as I expected. I then realized this woman was my mother. I was so surprised to see her looking like this. I looked at her from head to toe. She was young again. My mother, unlike me, had inherited her small, delicate features from my grandfather, who was French. She was gorgeous and quite slim, and had on a beautiful, stylish dress and shoes. A far cry from the memories I had of her except for that one memory when I was in kindergarten. I remember her visiting me for a Mother's Day celebration. She looked just like this then. She began to speak. She told me she felt wonderful, that she was having the time of her life, and that she had been out late doing different things. As she told me this story, a single tear rolled down her cheek. I took my finger to wipe it away. I felt the soft, smooth skin on her face. I then took my hand and placed it under her chin to really get a look at her. It was then that I felt my heart melt. I longed to see her, not the mother I remember from the long years of torment and unhappiness, the mother who found comfort and escaped through medication, the mother who cried all the time and hid from her abusive husband. This is the mother I remember. I miss the mother I barely knew, the one who is young and happy, who now is finally experiencing a fun and happy life, the life I wanted to help her experience after my father passed away, the life she then could not embrace. As I woke up, I found myself wanting to relive this dream, to be back with my mom, this mom. I went over and over the details of that dream, so I would not forget it. Mother's birthday was on July 17th. I actually forgot to think about her on that day. When I did remember days later, I thought, oh well, I have no really good memories of her, so it's just as well. I then heard the Lord speak to my heart. He told me, he was replacing the sad memories of my mother with happy ones. Now I have tears streaming down my face. I can't wait to see my mom one day in heaven. She will look just like this. It's time to go. I hope that something I have said has encouraged you, or perhaps made you laugh. In case you haven't visited my website, go to dearlanadee.com you'll be able to listen to any podcast that you've missed there. You can also find older podcasts in my archive section where I tell you about my life. Again, do you have a problem or a situation that you're going through? Or is there something you'd like to talk about? Then please write me at dearlanadee at gmail.com. That's dear L-A-N-A-D-E-E -E, at gmail.com. So until next podcast, I remain your friend, Lana Dee.